So this is episode 105 <laughs> of Give Me the Hot Sauce, stumbling into really your living stumbling. rooms or wherever stumbling. you happen to be listening or watching today. If you're watching on the YouTube chat, we say hello. We always enjoy your comments. If you're checking it out, just audio only on podcast, uh, you're going to miss Snoop's head. We we, took, yes. we cut his head off. We put him on the table. It was cryogenics. Yeah. It was yeah. cryogenics. He, he it's like went Ted to, Williams. He went to the Ted Williams effect. <laughs> and so we got Snoop's head, but he can hear us, though. He can hear you. He's just not going to be able yeah. to answer us, America. It's not, Snoop. It's all right. It's okay. And Whispers is just back from Fort Myers. He got back Sunday. Yesterday, as uh, we're recording this on Monday, how's the house doing? Everything okay? It's fine. I'm just waiting for the Larry the Lobster comment, hey, which is listen, just right around listen, the corner here. Listen, I'm not going to say anything. America, as you know, you've been following us. All the people have been following us over 100 and some episodes. You always know that Tim's nickname is Larry the Lobster. I chose today <laughs> because it's Halloween. He is going as a lobster, so there's no need for me to call him Larry the Lobster because he is going as a lobster. See how ready he is? Look at his face. He's about ready to explode like he's in scanners. But we're glad to have Timmy back. It's been two weeks. It's been long overdue. Welcome back, Tim. Thank you. I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> Another expansive a, comment. Is another I miss you. I you, miss you. Seriously, you're my boy. I miss you. Jeez, it's had 30 years of abuse. See how it just keeps going. Wow. Away. I'm being yeah, honest. Glad yeah. to have you back, Larry. I, listen, I'm, I was so, Larry. as soon as I walked to the door, yeah. I, I saw him when I walked to the door. I saw him with his ugly ass shirt on. Then I said, hey, <laughs> I'm just happy to see you, Tim. I'm glad to see you back. We missed you. It's not the same. And we miss Christopher Walken. I said, I thought I'd never say that. But we definitely miss Christopher Walken, so we're glad to have him back at least. Oh, so you miss Walken. Okay. <laughs> that makes more sense. <laughs> Snoop, anything? No? No. Okay. no. Snoop's got nothing to say. Hey, let's talk a little basketball. Uh, coming up later in the show, we're going to welcome in from the score, Lawrence Holmes. He does a great podcast, The House of L. So we're going to chat with him about the whole art of podcasting and some of the projects that he's working on. That's coming up in a few minutes. But first, we're going to talk a little hoops. And uh, Stacy, unfortunately, a couple of games got away for the Bulls over the weekend. San Antonio, they had a chance to win that one, ended up losing 129-124, and then a down-of-the-wire game against Philadelphia. They come up on the short end as well. Got to start winning some of these winnable games. <sighs> Mark. <laughs> that San Antonio game hurt. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, listen, I've been complaining about the schedule all year. I'm, I'm just waiting for the league to find me for all the times I'm complaining about the, <laughs> the, you know, the continued three games in four nights. Uh, but they can't silence me. I'm going to keep saying it until they find me like a million dollars and I'll definitely <laughs> shut up. Um, but we should have had San Antonio. We, we, played, we played well enough. There's a trend that's going on right now um, that we're starting games super slow. Yeah. And then we're finding ourselves down double digits, 14, 15 points. At one point, I think we were down 19 against San Antonio. And then second quarter, Billy makes some changes, brings some defensive guys in. Second team comes out. We've got one of the best second team's um, benches in the league. You know, they're a top 10 bench. Uh, and they've really saved us in a few games. Yeah. Because if, you know, if they didn't if they didn't come in and play the way they're playing, you're looking at losing by 30, okay? And to teams that you really shouldn't be losing to 30. And it's got to be somewhat of a concern with the coaching staff getting off to these slow starts. I don't know what the remedy is. I don't know, you know, do you make some changes in the starting lineup, get some other players in there? I don't know. But they've got to find a way to, to stop these slow starts. Spurs really aren't a joke, though. They beat the Timberwolves last night, 107-98. The Spurs right now are 5-2, and two, good for third place in the Western Conference. And I'm sure even Greg Popovich is looking around going, wait a minute, we're supposed to be tanking for Victor Webignano. What, what are we doing? They play hard. You know, that team plays extremely hard. they got a lot of young talent. Um, you know, they shoot the basketball very well. They share the basketball. There's a lot of guys on that team, Mark, um, that are team-oriented guys, you know, team-first guys. You can tell. And um, you win a few games that you're not supposed to win. You start to believe, like, hey, we, you know, we can – we know we can turn this this script around and make people believe like we're going to be a good team. Everybody thinks we're tanking. Um, you know, this could be Popovich's last year. He said it was, uh, but if he gets the number one pick, that Victor, Bayada, what's his name? <laughs> Wembenyama. Kim Bayada, what his name is? If they get him, you know, for ten years. I mean, and that's what. Unfortunately, the tanking is not going to work. It's a lottery system in that. that's yeah. based on that. So that the tanking is not going to work. But they play extremely hard. They move the basketball. They're one of the top teams in assists. You know, going into our game, I think they were in the top three in assists, team assists. So they had 30-something against us. And, and they, they shoot the ball, lights out. I mean, uh, three-point shooting was unbelievable. Like, we, they were just wide open shots. They were knocking them down. We were late getting out to shooters. And I, I kind of think that sometimes, you know, you look at a team, Mark, you know, I know we did this when we were winning championships. 
you know, there's certain teams you look at and go, oh, you know, we can just show up and win. And you find out getting your butt whipped by 30 and get back on a plane going, I guess we just couldn't show up and win. <laughs> so that's what I think happened in that San Antonio game. And that's the game you needed to get because on a back-to-back, -back, you got Philadelphia waiting for you, who they just had a huge win. Even though they started off slow, they had a huge win in Toronto. And Embiid didn't even play, you know. So now he's got fresh legs. So you got Embiid waiting for you. So you got to win these games. And that's what happened to the Bulls last year. They didn't – they could never win against teams above 500. And you don't want to continue that trend. And then when you got Embiid out there posting Aaron Rodgers tweets, like he's Aaron Rodgers against the Bulls. He's yeah, 12 yeah. and I own you, yeah. Yeah, I own you. That's frustrating to me, <laughs> yeah. seriously. Like, yeah. I don't even play anymore. And to hear a player say that, like, that should be – bulletin board material every time we play Philadelphia because he honestly thinks that he just because he shows up, they can win. Now, I will say this. Big-time players make big-time plays. He hit a big three-point shot to uh, give them the lead and basically won the game for him on that shot. But he fouled DeMar DeRozan. They did not give uh, DeMar the call, which is which is sad because he got away. He got away with a lot of – he had three fouls early and didn't pick up any more. Right. Didn't pick up any more. There were a couple of plays he could have got with. Yes, him. yes. And, Mark, you were there. I was there, I was yeah. They, yeah. America, y'all forget Mark was there. <laughs> Mark was right there. He's my right – he's my left-hand man. He's on my left-hand side. Yeah. So, Mark was there. So, Mark, you was there. You saw it. He got yeah, – you saw it up close. Those were fouls. In yeah. the end of the game, when DeMar is going to the foul line, trying to get to the foul line, trying to, you know, get a play – they don't call that, you know, and it was really it's really sad that it, it ended that way. Yeah, Zach had a tough time in the game against the Sixers. He missed a couple of mid-range shots, and he's still trying to find his way, which seems kind of odd in that he was saying that, you know, he's 100% recovered from the arthroscopic knee surgery. He feels great. But I guess if you don't play a lot of five-on-five five in the summer, you're going to have a little bit of rust you got to wear on. Well, it's just like, you know, going into preseason. You know, if you don't get a lot of preseason reps in, you're going to be a little bit rusty when the season starts. So, um you know, I understand what the Bulls are doing with him. You, he's your star player. You paid him a lot of money. You need him when the games count. So I can see what they're doing with him early. They've got him on a regimen. The back-to-back -back games are tough, you know, for him. And so they're trying to, you know, err on the side of precaution and not have their star player – have to miss significant time due to knee soreness or yeah. something wrong with the knee because he's had a – the way the schedule's been, it's, it's, I mean, I can see why they're doing what they're doing because we're playing – this is the second of uh, three games in four nights that we had to do. So we played basically six games in eight days, you know, which is crazy. And, you know, the Bulls play again tomorrow, come back, they play Charlotte at home on a back-to-back. -back. Then we go out to, to the East Coast, which is stupid because why would you go all the way out to the East to play Brooklyn and come all the way back to Chicago to play – Charlotte and go right back on the road East Coast, play Boston and Toronto, right. and then and in a back to back situation, and then Toronto in a back to back situation. It's just it's ridiculous. Whispers, did you uh, did you watch the game that Stacy and I worked Saturday night? Yes, I did, and I was impressed with your way to work the podcast right into that. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. That was the most impressive part of the game for me. Yes, you knew Mark was going to do that. Yeah, you knew, you knew it. You know, well, uh, he hey, went hey. from number seventeen up to number two for me. See? Yeah, oh, wow. <laughs> Look wow, 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 wow. I tell you what. I mean, it doesn't matter what Stacy thinks, Mark. Right? Listen, you're number oh, two. Oh, wow. <laughs> why are you going to try to come between me and Mark? Okay, first yeah. of all, first of all, Whisper. See, that's, what, this is why the Beatles broke up, because Yoko Ono, you are yeah. Yoko Ono. Okay, like I, I'm, I, am, I am Mark's biggest fan. Okay, I'm, I'm the one that's pushing for Mark to get on there because I think Mark is great. I thought Mark was one of the better guys. I'm not saying he was a top five. I'm not saying he's, <laughs> I'm not saying he's top ten. I'm not saying any of these things. I was things. somewhere in the top but 20, he, right? But, he, but the point is, Mark is in the poll. He's in the poll. And now, he, hey, America, get out to the Windy City Bulls games. That's Mark, right. Mark is going to be the play-by-play -play guy. He uh, he took the play-by-play -play guy out last year. They went out to went out to lunch, and they haven't. <laughs> and he never in, came they back. They never came back. They're still looking for him. I saw him on a milk carton, and they don't know where he's at. So Mark now has moved in. It's like it's like what is it? A fatal attraction. Mark got rid of the got rid no, of the he competition. moved to Colorado. At least yeah, allegedly. Yeah, yeah allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> I need to see a body count. I need to see him physically. Well, that I need movie to see was a Black picture. Swan. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. Black Swan. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know. Killed the top ballerina. I don't know. He just disappeared. He's like, in witness just, protection. He's just disappeared. <laughs> All I know is Mark's like, "Hey, I'm the Windy City guy. I got the, I got that." I'm like, "Yeah, what happened to the other guy?" Because Mark was the play Mark was the analyst. He did my job. And then all of a sudden, it was just like Ugh, a little elbow here and there. <laughs> Let's go out to lunch. What was his name, Mark? Julio. Julio. Yeah, it was me okay. and Julio down so, by the schoolyard. So Julio, <laughs> as we found out, I didn't know his name was Julio, yeah. but 
Julio, they went out to lunch, America. Yeah, they never and came Julio, back. They went, matter of fact, they went to Julio's, <laughs> the Mexican restaurant. That's where they went for lunch, and he disappeared at Julio's. Julio disappeared at Julio's. But he got the job, though. Yeah. Where can everybody give Mark a standing ovation? Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Appreciate it. And we got a question <laughs> on uh, the YouTube chats. Uh, Reggie asks, why did Mark stop doing the studio show? Well, that's a good yeah, story. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good question. Go ahead, Mark. Enlighten us. <laughs> Well, Reggie, much like my lunch with Julio, they took me out to lunch <laughs> and said, your services are no longer required. We're going to bring in somebody else. So that, they, did a, they did a Jerry Maguire on Mark. Yeah. They, took, they took Mark out to a crowded restaurant <laughs> to, so, so, so Mark couldn't get upset and make a right, scene, right. and they did a Bob Sugar on him. <laughs> <laughs> they got him out that way. Mark was like, Mark wanted to yell and scream, but he's like, oh. So, yeah, Reggie, they, they said to me, wouldn't you like to retire? Wouldn't retirement be good for you about this point in your life? And I'm like, no, no, i got a lot of good years left in me. And they're thinking, well, maybe not so much. Maybe you don't yeah, have so many good yeah, years they, left. Yeah, I'm sugar. They, had a, they, <laughs> hey, they did a Luca Brazzi on him. He went into the restaurant and put a string around his neck. <laughs> just, just choked him. He's out, ladies and gentlemen. But you know what? Guess what? Hey, hey! Some another man's trash is another man's diamond. I, Mark, I don't know if I'd use that analogy, but uh, thanks for that, Stacy. No, it's, a, it's in a good way. Oh, all somebody right, all thought right. you. Somebody yeah, might have thought right. you was trash. One man's seventeen but, is other man's yeah. number one. Yeah, see, see, and see, me and whispers, me and whispers. When we put this podcast together, I, I, I handpicked everybody on this show, you know, and we had we had whispers some, help put this together. No, whispers didn't do shit. He didn't do nothing. Wow. He just Jeez. he he's the man behind the scenes. He he got us those pimp mics from the very yeah. beginning. He helped out with that. So, so Mark, I went to go. I, I wanted Mark on my show because me and Mark used to do the pre and post game show. So we we had a great rapport. Mark is funny. You guys are you know, you guys are starting to realize Mark Chanowski is, is a funny dude. And um, so 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 now people are starting to see like Mark Mark is talented. He's just not a guy. Like I was telling Mark the other day, we we're talking, and so I said, you know, some guys are you know just read the teleprompter right, right they just read what's out there and you could put anything up there and they'll read it you know i said mark is creative mark is he's just got an ability to like make people feel at ease and that's why i got it and we had some people with us we started with five only yeah. the strong yeah, only, survive we're down to three <laughs> and shout out to shout out to stinger yeah and south side susan, susan yeah you know they those were they helped to get the show started i love them to death they're great friends uh, they're doing Major League Baseball podcast, so they that's want, right. And, and you know they're doing them up in Milwaukee, and so he's doing a great job up there. So we wish them nothing but the less, but nothing but the best. And thank absolutely. you, absolutely. Shout out to you guys because you guys helped get this thing going to a hundred. What are we at? One hundred five. One hundred and five. We got a great crew Ooh, now. Lord. The Sriracha crew. The doing Sriracha a great job crew. Yes, we got pinkies. We got pinkies over there. I didn't know what that was at first. He got a pink flag. What was he? Is he repping something we need to talk about? <laughs> Oh, oh, Pinky! Oh, oh, Day Day! Okay, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. Know. Okay, so everybody's dressed up. Everybody's dressed up. Maddie, what are you? The Black Widow. Yeah, it fits you right there. Lately. There you go. Lately, Maddie, you have been the Black Widow. Your attitude just sucks. Okay, and and what are you, Francisco? You the bomber? Huh? Oh, oh no, no, that's never no, fun. No, no, that, no, Francisco, ladies and gentlemen. You should have broke the, out hey, that T-shirt hey, again. Hey, listen, Francisco's the guy. Look, he's got a little hood on right now. Francisco's the guy that's in Central Park, and, and you're running and jogging. At like midnight, he jumps out and tries to rob you. That's who he's going to as a robber. And, and D, <laughs> D was Woody from uh, from Toy Story, yeah. but he took he off his cowboy. Hat. He dished a hat because he said because we were teasing him. So wait, what, what, are you, what are you now? Just a regular person? Uh, Just farmer. a farmer. You're a farmer? You're, yeah. you're, you're a landscaper? No. Okay. Oh, he's a landscaper no, in America. My, my family in Honduras has a coffee business. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Well, we can't joke with you anymore. <laughs> it's yeah. like, this is a serious <laughs> business here. Can wow. we get some of those beans? Tim, what do you ask? Tim, what do you ask? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> he must be a sack. He, he's fan. an ink stain, I think. Yeah, he's... Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, yeah. What, what's your, what's your favorite comic person. guy? That's uh, him. Oh, who? You know who it is. Who's my favorite comic? Jeez, the Punisher. Come on, man. Oh, the Punisher. Okay, but he's black. Is, he has black arm. Yeah, this is what he wears when he's going out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and and I'm going as a Sox fan. That's really unique. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going as a Sox fan. It was easy to dress up as a Sox fan. <laughs> hey, I heard that uh, one of our great sponsors was at the game the other night. Jeff Bukovic. Oh, Jeff Bukovic. Yeah, he showed up to the United Center. And, of course, it, when you have your insurance needs for your auto, home, and business, make sure you contact our good buddy. He's the king of insurance, nationwide agent Jeff Vukovic. 
You'll find him at all the various Chicago sports games supporting the local teams. You can reach him at jeffvuk.com. That's jeffvuk.com. And Stacy, it's Halloween night. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Nationwide is on your side. Oh, oh, oh the golden pipes. Happy Halloween. We get something extra special for a Halloween so, night. Don't interrupt me again. I'll throw it right there. I will throw it. No, no. Listen, it's called good listen, timing. Listen, listen, Tito. Tito. It's about timing. It's Michael Jackson. I'm the lead singer. I'm solo now. <laughs> you missed your chance. Hey, we got uh, some NBA basketball. We're going to talk about a variety of topics before we bring in Lawrence Holmes. But first, before we get off the Bulls, I looked at their injury report for tomorrow's game against Brooklyn, and Andre Drummond is already out because of that left shoulder no! strain. Now they've got uh, Zach Levine, Kobe White, and Io are all questionable, but Io did practice yesterday. So my guess is, you know how competitive that kid is. He'll probably be out there, and the Bulls really need him. Man, I tell you what, it, it was a big loss against the Sixers not having Drummond out there. Yeah, it was. I mean, seriously, it was a huge, huge loss. It hurt the second team. It hurt rebounding. It hurt defense. Um, Io not being out there also hurt. That's 17 points out the lineup. Yeah. You know, we ended up losing by, I think, four. Five. Five. That's 17 points out the lineup. And it's a different dynamic when he's out there because he pushes the pace. He can defend. Um, you know, they could have put him on James Harden, you know, um, and he, he would have done a good job defensively. Um, and he just he just puts, puts the Bulls in a different running mode. You know, he's out there leading the fast break, gets him some easy baskets. They didn't really get easy baskets against Philadelphia. Uh, they didn't attack James Harden as much as I thought they should. And then I, I just think, you know, even though Vooch, Vooch was scoring a lot, you know, from the three-point line, you know, I'd like to see him more in the post. I think he's starting to fade more back into outside shooting that he did last year and yeah, kind of getting yeah. away from the post game. The Brooklyn Nets are one in five. They're off to a Ooh. terrible start. That's where the Bulls are going to play on Tuesday night. And did you see our guy Nick Friedel going nose to Nick. nose with Kyrie? <laughs> that out, was something in that post game press shout conference. Shout out to Nick. Nick yeah. didn't back back down. Listen, you know, as a reporter, as much as athletes don't like it, they have a job to do. His mm -hmm. job is to ask the tough questions. Okay, that's what they send him. That's what ESPN sends him out there to do. He's only doing what they ask him to do. Okay, just like the players have jobs to do, and you got to remember, you know, players, you're going to get, you're going to get tough questions. You're going to get questions that you don't like, that you're uncomfortable. All you have to do, instead of getting in a debate about whatever you tweeted or whatever he did, I'm just not here to talk about that. You want to talk basketball? We can talk basketball, but I'm not talking about something that's off the court because I have my own opinion. Whether you like it or not, he has his opinion, and he doesn't have to talk about it. Nick can keep asking and keep asking it, and he can say next question, next question. Instead of getting into a debate, and it really, really made him look bad in my eyes, you know, going back at Nick because you're the one who tweeted it, you're the one who liked it, so you have to answer to that. Especially yeah. with the way things are going right now in this society, people want to know, like, who, what are you doing? You know? Yeah, especially given Kyrie's background and all the controversial topics he's been involved in. And for people who don't know this story, Kyrie basically tweeted something supporting a film that has a lot of anti-Semitic con content in it. And so Nick questioned him about it, and, and he said, well, I don't have to talk about that. And Nick was you know, very uh, persistent in saying a lot of people were offended by what was in that film. And for you to come out in support of it, is not a good look for you. And then at the end of all this, after he said it's none of your business, and next question, next question, he deleted the tweet. After Kyrie did, yeah, because because even his owners were were questioning. Yeah, his owner wasn't so, happy. So so like you know, don't put something out if you're not gonna stand on it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. If you if, if I tweet something and it comes from me, unless my Twitter was hijacked, which it, which won't we have be. it on the screen for people watching yeah. on YouTube. Look at that. Kyrie Irving has deleted his tweet that included a link to the movie Hebrews and to Negroes. Wake up, black America. Okay, that's a strong tweet. Yeah. That's a strong – that's why Twitter, you have to be careful uh, when you're on social media because you think you think that it's not that big of a deal, but it's a big deal for everything, especially with Kanye West running around and doing the things that he's doing. Right. You know, you're making these accusations. It's yay no. Yeah, <laughs> throat punch. So yeah, yeah, exactly. See, there and there's there's Nick Fredale. Do you think anything that's gone on with Kyrie recently, with what he posted in backlash, he's faced from, it has impacted the group at all? And this is to Kevin Durant. He asked Kevin Durant yeah. this, and he said, "Absolutely not. Only impacted you guys and everybody outside the locker room. Of course, everybody mm -hmm. outside the locker room. Right. But if it, if your owner is offended, you got problems. Yeah. You know? I mean, you, listen." 
I, I keep saying this, like it's a very touch and go situation. Nowadays, you have to be cognizant of what you put out there on social media because it can be taken in different contexts. OK, um, especially when you talk about what's going on now, you know, I mean, there's a big thing with Twitter now with Elon Musk and and all the, you know, the racist uh, comments that are being put on Twitter and and the N word being thrown around on Twitter. It, it's 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 a major problem now. And so. You got to be very careful about, you know, the water you tread when you're dealing with that kind of stuff. So it really surprised me. Kyrie, I understand. Listen, he's his own man. He's going to do what he wants to do. No one can tell a grown man what he can and cannot do. But there is backlash for what you may say. You may think because I'm a grown man, I can say what I want. But there are going to be some people that don't like what you say that impacts your livelihood, as we see with Kanye West, as he's lost mil hundreds of millions of right. dollars based off of things that he has said. And now he's sitting there thinking he was untouchable. You know, I'm a billionaire. I'm a, I'm a black billionaire, da, da, da. And then you start talking. You know, Chase Banks tells you, we don't care if you got $400 million in our bank. Get it, get it out. Get it right. out of here. Go put it somewhere else. And then now you're walking around here. You lost your Adidas contract. You lost, you know, all your, 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 your other contracts that you have. You lost almost $500 million in less than 24 hours. And Kyrie's going to be a free agent at the end of the year, so he's going to go to these other N NBA teams and say, why don't you give me this max deal? And they're going to go, we don't want to do business with somebody who's as controversial as you. So that's yeah. the kind of thing he's Yeah, even at. when you're talking about werewolves, UFOs, nanobots, and <laughs> flat earth. Or the flat earth. I mean, right. but there's certain things that people will excuse and say, okay, he's just a little weird, you know. And But then there's other things, man, when you start talking about, you know, anti-Semitic things and – that's not going to sit well with people. Just like, just like if the role was reversed and someone was 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 tweeting about African Americans and Hispanics in in a derogatory way, that's not going to sit well with everyone. Mm -hmm. It may sit well with a group of people, but there's going to be more people who are going to have a problem with that, and and they're going to voice that, and that's going to cause problems. That's why you have to be very careful. And that's why these NBA players, you you should have a person that works for you that proofreads your tweets before you send them out. <laughs> Seriously. Because yeah. yeah, like, yeah. a lot of times these guys just tweet and send it out. Boom, tweet and send it out. They're not even reading what they're tweeting. They're like Kevin Durant. I love Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant has rabbit ears. Kevin Durant fights with everybody. I think if we right now from Give Me the Hot Sauce tweeted something about Kevin Durant, he sucks, he's garbage, he would respond to us right then. Yeah. Because that's how he is. He doesn't like any negative criticism whatsoever, and he feels like he has to go back at you. At some point – you got to let that roll off your back because at the end of the day, you know, these people don't put money in your pocket, clothes on your back, and food in your mouth. So why are you letting them impact how you live your day, everyday life? You're, you're a millionaire. You're a multimillionaire. You get paid playing a kid's game. Why am I worrying about a guy who's sitting in the basement eating Pop-Tarts and yelling to his mom, <laughs> Mom, Mom, bring some more Pop-Tarts, Ray. Who cares? Who cares what he thinks? I mean, these guys get so sensitive on this stuff. Yeah. Speaking of social media, did you see that uh, Elon Musk is going to charge, try to charge everybody twenty dollars a month to keep your blue check mark? Well, let me just tell you about this, Elon Musk. <laughs> Elon, Elon Musk, let me tell you this: I'm leaving. Yeah, you're not going to yeah. charge me for my blue check. Yeah. No, no, because I'm going to tell you something else. Somebody, we were just talking this. I was in the car with my man Mike Almeroth, yep. okay, and we we're sitting there talking about, you know, he he left Twitter. He left Twitter because of all the junk stuff that's coming on there, and he hated to leave because he like he follows, you know, me and he follows the show and everything. He said he had to get off because of all the negative stuff since Elon Musk has taken over. And so, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that feel the same way that he does. And I would not be surprised. Whisper, we need to get on this because I me mean, whisper, whisper well, is I great. Jumped on Yates yeah, parlor. Yeah. No, we we need to we need to start our <laughs> own like our own little network and get it going out there, and so we can we can we can take over Twitter. Get all the people who are unhappy, come on over to us. Come yeah, on, come over to us, and 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 because somebody's going to do it. Somebody's going to do it. Watch what I tell you. There is going to be another social network within the next few months that is going to that's going to rival Twitter. Well, I guess the guy that founded Twitter is already trying to start up another one. Well, I guess yeah, people are going to start bailing. Well, I'll tell you what. He He's gone off the rails, too, though. Yeah, well, let me tell you something. As long as you get my blue check, <laughs> that's all I care about. I have my blue check. <laughs> you know, I had, to work, I had to work for that blue check on all my social media yeah. aspects. Because, you know, you get people pretending that you're, they're you. Yeah, And sure. they, send out, they send out really bad tweets. I've had somebody, like, before I got the blue check, was had an account that said, this is King, the Chicago Bulls, blah, blah, blah. And they're sending out tweets that, like, they're me. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's not what. And you got to explain that stuff. You got to explain that stuff to people. I'm like, oh, I didn't say that. That's yeah. not me. You, well, got it's your account. you got a blue check mark? I do, yeah. Yeah. You got a blue check? 
No, I need people to steal my identity to boost <laughs> my numbers. Hey, speaking <laughs> of stealing identity, everybody's been missing Christopher Walken. Is he back from his Fort Myers trip? Was he was he staying at you when he's down in Florida? I always stay with Whispers. <laughs> he's just accommodating. <laughs> Whispers have a nice place down there. It's nice. He's missing some pieces though. <laughs> I heard that you that Whispers actually. Uh, did some damage to the gas tank. He, he took out his, his own equipment to cut off a lock. Yeah, he's a Isn't criminal. Isn't that dangerous? He's a criminal. I mean, he goes outside. <laughs> they got a Terminator on his gas, and he just grabs the pliers and just takes it off like it's nothing. It's like he's stealing the gas. And then the gas company comes, and he pr- pleads ignorance like he didn't do anything wrong. Right. I mean, I did that in a movie once. It didn't work out well. They called him Gas Pipe Dave, and he blew the whole place up. Is, is that a true story, though? Yeah, it, that's true. <laughs> Are I you saw serious? It. I, I thought it was a made-up story. That's true. He, he could have blown up the whole place. The whole house could have got yeah. blown up. Yeah, that's right. Wow. <laughs> Do wow. it yourself. It's Only the, whispers. The motto. Yeah. A whispers, like a real whispers. DIY guy. Hey, do you have any good hot sauce while you're down in uh, Fort Myers? Oh, he was loaded. I mean, the cupboards. There was no food, but plenty of sauce. <laughs> How can people get some of that sauce? Well, Chris, you can, you can get your favorites. At GiveMeTheHotSauce.com. I mean, that super hot stuff. I mean, it was hot enough down there already, but a couple of chips with that 1871. My God. (laughs) (laughs) It turned him into Larry the Lobster. (laughs) (laughs) So stop by GiveMeTheHotSauce.com and use code KING21 to get 21% off your first order. Yeah, I hear Whispers personally packages every order. I haven't seen him do it, but <laughs> I got a shipment with a broken bottle once, and then I used it to jab it in someone's neck. Started slashing people with it, right? That's right. Yeah. And with the hot sauce, there's a little extra burn when you cut them. That's what I like about it, especially the 1871. Extra remnants make them hurt. Oh, you're a fool, man. You're a fool. Hey, you're and, fool. and go, go to YouTube and check out uh, some of the bulls doing some taste testing of the hot sauce. That was yes. a lot of fun. Yes, we have that out? Yeah, that's on YouTube. So, oh, so go baby. check out the Give Me the Hot Sauce Way to go, YouTube Kirby. page. It's a lot of fun with some of the guys checking out the hot sauce. Hey, uh, Lawrence Holmes is patiently waiting in the Sriracha waiting room. Patiently so we, we will bring him in. We will talk the art of podcasting, his great radio career, and all the projects he's up to. Lawrence Holmes next on Give Me the Hot Sauce. This is episode 105. We are actually coming at you live from the Sriracha studios on Halloween evening. And Lawrence Holmes, kind enough to break off his Halloween plans to join us. You know Lawrence, of course, uh, does great work on the score. He's one half of the Bernstein and Holmes show. You hear him on middays, 10 to 2. He's a professor at DePaul teaching media. He's a comic book writer. He writes a column for the Sun-Times. Man, this guy's got to be tired, Stacey. I mean, how can you do all that work? Damn, I didn't know he had all those credentials. Wow. (laughs) Holy cow. Lawrence Holmes, welcome in. And, of course, uh, he also does the great House of L podcast. I had a chance to do that very early on. And, you know, he's a fantastic interviewer. I mean, the, the areas that he gets to, he gets people to talk about parts of their lives they probably haven't talked about before. Well, yeah, he got he got me to talk about uh, J- Jason Goss' ashy ankles. I thought we had put that, <laughs> I thought, I thought we had put that away. You know, we two, we two years in a room, and then, you know, they, you know Lawrence Holmes and, and, yeah. and, and, and Layla, they both brought up something. I thought it was dead. I yeah. thought once I was out, they brought me back in. They, and started, back talking in, again. Huh? they started talking about the ashy ankles again, and uh, Jason Goff got sick the next day. I'm like, oh, man, damn. We, we should let Lawrence say something. Lawrence, welcome in. <laughs> hey, welcome in. I, I appreciate you guys uh, letting me be a part of the show. It's very much like I'm on, like, Candy Watch, though. I feel like my doorbell just rang. Uh-oh. Because, uh, you know, the trick or treat. So I got the bowl, like, right here just in case. Yeah. It, wait, hang on. Let me look real quick. Out just, just put it out in front. Oh, wait, and say, wait, wait, Take wait, wait. One. All right, that always all right works. hang on, hang on, just a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So last week we had Kenny McReynolds on, and he had a suit and tie, and he had a great background. <laughs> wait a so, so now we got, now we got Lawrence breaking right. off the show. Sorry to about get, that. To get yeah. away Kenny. I mean, what, what the heck's going on? I don't know. Well, it's, it's Halloween. The, you know, the kiddos are out. I, I thought usually the schedule for most of the kids is like right after school. No, no. Usually where I'm at, they don't come by after dark, but, you know, whatever. There's a Spider-Man out there and his big sister, so they got candy. <laughs> oh, Lawrence, there was, a, there was a vicious rumor in here saying that, you know, you got all these jobs, you're making all this money, you can get some better candy than that, man. Come on, man. <laughs> they say, come, I, come on, man. You got the little stuff, man. Little M&Ms, a little, a little bitty bar of, like, that's uh, true. three musketeers. Come on, man. Get the full stuff, man. Give me, like, 25 M&Ms, <laughs> man, not five. 
<laughs> well, I use I usually like double up though. Like they can have whatever they want out out of here. So we try to be very generous. <laughs> um, yes, but you're right. Uh, maybe I should step into that that Stacy King tax bracket <laughs> where you're giving out full size candy hey, bars. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Because I want people to know they come by my house. Like I'm gonna go to Stacy King because he's giving out good candy. Because remember when you was a kid, yeah. you knew exactly what houses to go to every year. It's like I'm not going there. She give me that nasty butterscotch candy or the or the or the candy corn. Yeah. You know? Oh, I hate some, that. Some yeah. of that red curd yeah. stuff from yeah, red curd. Yeah. Hey, yeah, that's a red curd <laughs> candy with with the lint on it because it's still sticky. <laughs> that's like a big fight now. Like in in the in the candy community, there are now all these people that are like. Like, oh, I love candy corn. No, you don't. No, you don't. Like, you're, you're, just, you're just trying to be different. Yes. And you're trying to act like you, it's it's basically a wax candle yes. that you're eating. Right. So don't tell me that it tastes good because no. it doesn't. It's and the two, worst. two of my good friends, John Shipman and Dion Miller, are advocates of Brock's I, candy corn. Every year at this ugh. time, they go, send all the candy corn to us because we love it. I, I am shocked by that. Those are two really smart people, yeah. and you would think that they would have better taste buds, and they don't. Uh, I tell you, man, that, those were those were the days when you you know we used to we, we didn't have the pumpkin Halloween. We used to yeah. we used pillowcases, you know, in my neighborhood. We had right, right, right. So plus, you get more candy in the pillowcases, and so when you got home, you just couldn't wait to get in and see what you had, and then so you start you know dissecting the candy, and you see there's butterscotch. There's like fifty butterscotch. There's that red hot candy, with the little <laughs> yeah. red thing. You know, not the little red hot candy, but the the little the, the one that's the same size as the butterscotch, but yeah, in the red yeah, wrapper. Right. And then you'd have the candy corn in there. And then that's when people put candy in there without wrappers. And they just throw it in there. Yeah. And yeah. apples. You have some fruit. old root beer uh, barrels. Root beer barrels? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie though. I'm hey, a bit of honey. Hey, hey, I ain't gonna oh yeah, bit of honey. You <laughs> lost <laughs> half your teeth. <laughs> Pull your <laughs> feelings out. <laughs> You lost half your teeth, bit of honey. <laughs> oh man, no, no. Stacy was looking for for the bit of honey and the slow poke. Man, hey, the slow poke. <laughs> hey, don't sleep. No sleep. The slow poke was all oh, man. That was the some of my favorite candy. Oh, slow poke was great. The black cow. Remember the black cow? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Boy, don't sleep. But that's the old school candy. Isn't a slow poke just a milk dog that was stepped on that's now five years old? <laughs> hey, and milk dogs too. Milk dogs was it? Was it? Pull your feelings too. Up, too. Yeah, man. If I trade hey, some Stacey, I gotta now, tell I you, man. Fall. I had an experience last week that was so amazing because I had a box of fresh milk duds. Oh. Like ones that weren't oh. gonna tear your teeth. It was oh. delicious. Yes. I was sitting there they going, How did I they get were so soft. lucky? They were soft. Yes. 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 Now, I, I, you know, last time I had some milk dust, I had to put them in the microwave for like 10 seconds just to soften them up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. See, these are the kind of in-depth interviews you only get on Give Me the Hot yes. Sauce. I don't know if you'd find this on House of L, but I'm sure you talked about candy with some of your guests, right, Lawrence? Oh, yeah. We do all sorts yeah. of stuff now. Yeah. Now that I got the the Sports Adjacent podcast with Tony Gill and, yep. Yep. and Russ yep. Dorsey and, and, and Jason Leisure, there's no telling what those boys might be talking about. So this is par for the course. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, let's talk about your show with Dan. Obviously, there were some changes in programming, and you guys got merged together with a longer show. How's that working out for you guys? So far, so good. We actually just got the ratings back for October, and we keep we keep losing to Wojo. We keep like that's the only <laughs> station that's beaten us in the demo. So you know, people are out there getting getting their bachata on, and that's cool. But um, we. It, it, it's gone really well. And I kind of thought it was going to go well because Dan and I both have very similar ways of driving a show. Yeah. So what it's done for me after spending so much time doing my own show where I have to be the person that initiates stuff. It's nice to, it's nice to know that I'm with a partner that I can trust to do that. Like to put it in basketball terms, like, both of us are scoring points like we're we're scoring scoring point guards, but I wanted to play off the ball for a while. And Dan was like, cool, like he can he can stay on the ball and I can play off the ball. And it's been a lot of fun. We've done a lot of cool stuff. We've I feel like our White Sox covers this year was top notch and the Bears cover since both of us covered the Bears for as long as we did. I think it's been on point, too. So. As far as the listener goes, I hope that they're having a good time because we're definitely having a good time. Talk a little bit about, you know, growing up in Chicago and, uh, you know, being here and now, you know, working in a city where you get to do something that you truly love to do because you're, you're in a lot of different, you know, uh, arenas and, and it all kind of taught, you know, ties together, you know. So talk a little bit about having that experience, being from Chicago, being able to do what you love and have your family close to you, friends get a chance to see you 
on a daily basis or listen to you? Stacy, I'm I'm really lucky. I I'm I'm a bit of an anomaly. I've never had to leave Chicago to to do what I've done. And I mean, you know, Nick was one of my students. I tell I tell the students all the time about how rare that is. A lot of times you end up having to go to different markets and you try to work your way back yep. to a market like Chicago. I I grew up here in and I think in a really good time in like Chicago sports history. It's funny. I just wrote my column for the Sun Times that'll be out tomorrow or on Wednesday, depending on when people listen to the pot. And it's all about growing up as a fan of Jim McMahon and how as much as I love Jim McMahon, Justin Fields is it's the it's the first quarterback since Jim McMahon that I've been super excited about. And when I was 10 years old, like I was rocking a homemade Jim McMahon jersey and all that stuff, being able to grow up and watching the, your championship teams, watching the, the run that the Bulls went on between 91 and 98. That's me in high school like that. That that starts with me as a what sophomore in high school. So being able to live through that and then cover the Bears on a daily basis, cover the Bears in a Super Bowl, be able to see a White Sox World Series, see the Cubs win a World Series, see three Stanley Cups. It's been amazing. I, I'm i pretty sure that if you'd have dropped me somewhere else, I would have made a life in sports. But being able to do it at home with the teams that I care about, it, it means the world to me. Lawrence, you mentioned uh, covering the Bears. They made another trade, uh, Roquan Smith going to Baltimore for a second and fifth round yeah. draft pick and a veteran linebacker. We were talking about this before the show. I don't understand how these teams talk about rebuilds and yet trade away players in their early to mid-20s. I mean, we saw with the Blackhawks, they trade Alex to Brinkett. You know, 40 goal scores don't grow on trees. And then you got a three-down linebacker in Roquan Smith. I know they had a contract stalemate and maybe that was the reason they traded him but why do rebuilding teams give away some of their best assets who are not even entering their prime yet you know I've been doing a lot of thinking about this and I'd love to get you guys' thoughts on it because you've seen it from the the NBA perspective I've I've become tired of having to wonder if someone is moved on from because they aren't the new person's guy right and when I look at Roquan Smith, he's 25. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like this isn't if yeah. he were 29, I would be like, OK, yeah, I I'd completely understand where you're coming from. They did hit a stalemate. And you're right, Mark. Like, I wonder if if that played a role in it. But I feel like he's one of the guys that you could project out as being good when you expect the team right. to be good. And and. Considering the position that he plays, I'm going to get like real football -y here for a second. So don't mind me. This is from all those years of sitting in the room with Alex and Lance and Olin and Matt. Look, this Bears team plays a cover two. It's very reminiscent of the cover two that the Bears played under Lovey Smith. The difference, of course, being there is no Brian Erlacher, like he's a unicorn and it's hard to duplicate what that guy could do to drop back and pass coverage and cover the middle third of the field, okay? If we're looking at a standard cover two, the three most important positions in that cover two are the three technique, which the Bears don't have. They tried with Larry Ogunjobi, and it didn't work out. The weak side linebacker, the position that Lance Briggs played, and played to what I think is a Hall of Fame level, and hopefully he gets in. And now, because... A lot of teams are in 11 personnel where they've got three wide receivers on the field for a, bit, a majority of the games, like usually 70, 72 percent of the snaps. That nickelback is your like third most important defensive player. They move Roquan Smith from a middle linebacking spot to a weak side linebacking spot. I think it actually fit him. Yeah. So now if you're the Bears, they think that they found something with Kyler Gordon. I'm not sure about that but you now have to go and find what are two of the more difficult pieces to find on a defense which is three technique and and a will linebacker plus 
They traded away Robert Quinn, which I which made more sense to me. It probably should have been done in the offseason. You basically have to, outside of your back four, you've basically got to rebuild an entire defense. Yep. And I don't care how much money you have for free agency. That takes some time. So I felt they were ahead of the game if they could have come to an agreement with Roquan about a deal. I also wonder if he may have fumbled the bag. Like, I wonder if if the numbers that I was hearing that the Bears offered him, while it may not have been record-breaking, it could have been life-changing. Yeah. And and did you give away $100 million because you don't have representation? And and I, I, I don't know what, what the rule is in the NBA, but in, in the NFL, agents can only make a maximum of 3% on a deal. And I talked with some people that told me, that there were agents in the NFL that are just trying to, to, to get as many clients as they can that would have done Roquan's deal for less than 1%. Wow. wow, Jeez. You got to let someone do your deal, man. Like, that that's the type of stuff that I hope that he doesn't regret it. I hope that he balls out. He's an incredible player. But now it's weird that now Baltimore has two players who don't have agents. Right. Wow. And they got to pay them both. How wild is that? <laughs> well, you, you you hit the nail on the head, Lawrence. You you got to have res- representation because you go in there without an agent, and you're you're basically the agent is the buffer between the player and the ownership. So that means there's going to be things said in that room that is offensive <laughs> to a player. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You're you're not good enough. We can find ten people that can do your job for way less, and you got to hear this as a player going in there, you know, representing yourself. Whereas if you have an agent, your agent is going to roll up the sleeves and he's going to say, "Okay, then trade him, move him." If you don't think he's worth this money, and he's the buffer between ownership and the player. So, but when you go in there as a player, man, um, you're exposed to things that you probably don't want to hear. You know, and then then there's bad blood. That's why you sit out because you probably heard he probably heard things that he didn't like uh, that he wasn't appreciated by ownership. So he says, you know what? I'm gonna ride the bike during uh, training camp. Right. My hamstring hurts. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll make sure that <laughs> yeah. that I'm a hundred percent. And it's it's really rare that you see the leading tackler in the NFL be traded. Yeah. I mean, I, I, at twenty five. Twenty five. At twenty at twenty five years old. I get where they are and they're their time horizon. They're at the beginning of their rebuild. I just think that I think that that's a player where you go, let's try and make this work because this is going to be one of the leaders of our defense, but we'll see how it goes. But do you think Lawrence, do you think that when he did the press conference the other day after the Quinn trade, that that didn't help either? I I mean, I would hope that they wouldn't hold that against him. I mean, he, he really, it, Stacey, I think you really like Robert Quinn from everything that I've heard about him. Like, he's an OG. Like, he's yeah. he's a really interesting guy. He kind of didn't want to get traded either. He he fears change. He, he wants to be comfortable, and he finally found some comfort here in Chicago. I'm not surprised. that They had to have the coach talk to the team after he was traded. So he, he that guy was a captain. And so was Roquan. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I I would under I understand why Roquan would be emotional. And because he got the news on the podium. It, it wasn't wow. like it was prepared. Like the the assembled media told him that Robert Quinn had been traded. Oh, I didn't so, know that. I thought he knew. No, so finding finding that out, finding that out in front of everyone, I think was a little rough for him. Yeah, that that you know, there's some football's a lot different than basketball, you know, uh, especially with the guaranteed money and you know and and what football players have to go through. So you know, lose a guy like Quinn that's loved in the locker room, you know, and you know that's tough because you know you got a lot of people that looked up to him, and you know you got a young linebacker, 25 years old, who you you would think has been in this league a lot longer. It seems right. like he's been in this league like 10 years, but he hasn't. And you know I can understand his 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 frustration and grief because he's like saying like what what is the direction are we going in here? Like you know this like you said that trade could have been been made in in the off season. Here we are in the middle of the season, and they make that trade. So players look at it probably like, well, damn, if they trade him in the middle of the year, they might be looking to trade me. Yeah, I I wouldn't no be loyalty. surprised if they did more, honestly. I they, they got like 20 hours to do it or whatever, but I wouldn't be surprised if 
if they had another deal up their sleeve. You talk, you know, you talk about, you know, we talk about Justin Fields, and, and I'm a big Justin Fields fan. I, I think, you know, this kid is special. I think I've been asking for them to, to take the training wheels off. Let him th- let him just sling it. Let him do his thing. Let him do his let him let him play the way he can play right now. And we'll worry about everything else later. I mean, you know, we're not you're not gonna make the playoffs, but let him develop, let him get his skill set. Um, the main thing that I look at when I look at the Bears is their offensive line. I don't think it's I don't think it's tailor made for him per se because he's a guy that moves around the pocket. He's not a pocket passer and he's constantly moving around, which puts a, a, a non athletic line in peril a little bit. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, and and it's hard to build offensive line, and I it's been one of the things that I've been critical of Ryan Poles about because I was worried that they wouldn't get a real great evaluation on Fields because he'd be running for his life. Now, credit to Matt Eberflus and Luke Getze. They clearly have that. They had a talk. Apparently, Eberflus had a conversation with Fields after the Washington game. They were going to use that extra time to kind of do a forensic breakdown of what they are and what they needed. And he talked with Fields, and apparently they came to a consensus of, here are the things that I can do and I'd like to do more of, and then the Bears met him halfway. That's good coaching. Like that, that's yeah. that I have a lot of respect for Eberflus because there are so many coaches that are dogmatic that this is my system and my system has to be run this way. Well, I was talking with Kurt Warner last week, and he said that one of the biggest problems is you have these coaches that do it that way and then don't take into consideration what the player is. And, and where the player can excel. And he said that he took a quantum leap in his career by advocating for himself and saying, I, I can't run this play. I don't like this play. I'm better at X, Y, and Z. So I give the Bears a lot of credit, Eberflus in particular, by going to his quarterback and saying, what can we do? And it's strange. You wouldn't think that calling more run plays for Justin Fields would be safer but it is. It, if you can control the type of run that you have and you know where you're supposed to go, you know where the hole is, you know you, you'll you need to get out of bounds, that's safer than him having to scramble on plays because the offensive line doesn't protect him. I hope that a bulk of the resources this offseason go towards an offensive line and, and some receiving help for him. And they may have lucked into a guy that's going to play guard for them for years in Tevin Jenkins, and they wanted to ship him out of town. That's right. Oh, uh, man, we, I remember that. Right? Mm-hmm. And he's been their best offensive lineman. Wow. Hey, Lawrence, I uh, want to talk to you about uh, your teaching uh, at DePaul right now. Obviously, you're a young guy yourself, and you talk to a lot of aspiring. Oh, not that young. Young journalists. <laughs> and, you know, I've been doing this forever, and the, the way the media has changed since I first broke in is just night and day. And, and, and yeah. to, to see what, what young people have to do now to try to get themselves in a position where they can make a, a decent living in this profession. You know, there's so many what they call MMJs, multimedia journalists, where you have to do everything yourself. Uh, I've got a friend who, who has a son who's in the business, and he has to go out, set up his own live shot, and and you know shoot everything and frame it up, and you know it's it's become so difficult, and the jobs pay less and less and less. How do you try to send that message to the, your students that you can have a meaningful career when you know back in the back of your head they're facing some pretty long odds right now? They are. They're facing long odds, and I, and I try to tell them my story. My first full time job at the score, I made twenty three five. Yeah. So I try to tell them it's worth it if you love it. Right. But you need to make sure that you love it because if you don't love it, it's it's going to it's going to mess with you. Like the the one man band type stuff yeah. that is being asked of students. And now the industry. I used to think that you could have like a, a three to five year plan. I don't think you can do that anymore in our industry because it changes so quickly. So my advice to them is everyone needs to be everything. That's that's a place usually where I start. If you're someone whose background is in writing, well, guess what? You're going to have to go on radio or podcast or television to promote 
what it is that you write. If you're someone who sees yourself as someone who reads the teleprompter, that's cool, but you're still going to have to be able to write for your website probably. You're going to have to put up videos that aren't scripted. You're going to probably have to do radio. So it's trying to explain to them that there's they need to be they need to at least be aware of what it is that they want to do in the industry and what other jobs are inside of the industry too. The other thing that I I love to talk to them about is the concept of diversifying. If you're someone who loves sports, like I kind of knew that I wanted to be in sports from the time I was 16 years old, whether it was playing baseball or being behind a microphone. But I think that our students now need to get a dose of other of of other mediums meaning if you love sports i want you to take an internship at wgci because maybe you'll find out that while you do love sports there's room for you to love sports and music over at gci yeah. I want you to go work at the the newsroom in BBM. Right. I want you know what I mean? I yeah. want you to get a sense of what it's like to work behind a camera so that you understand what the people that are behind the scenes are seeing when you're in front of the camera. All of that I think leads to a rich life of of helping you make the decision that you want to chase this. There is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow for some people, but you better love it. Because you need to you need to be the person that always says yes, where, hey, the, the, this person's off because it's Christmas or this person's off because it's Thanksgiving. You want to be in a position where you can get in that spot and show them what you can do and then take it from there. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, you know, be a jack of all trades because, you know, social media now is, is we didn't have it, you know, coming up. You know, when I was at when I was at University of Oklahoma, you know, one thing that my uh, communications uh, class and journalism class always had me doing, he never had me doing things I was comfortable in. So I could never when I wrote for the school newspaper, I could never cover sports. So he would always ah. send me. He would always send me to go do. You know, it could be it could be anything from like city council meeting to, and I had to write about these things that I was not comfortable with. You know, where sports I could I could write about sports with my eyes closed, and that's when back in those days, like you know the you know late '80s, you know that's when everybody wanted to write for the newspaper. Everybody wanted to do that. So my goal was if I didn't, you know, if I wasn't going to be a professional athlete, I want to be you know a journalist. I wanted to write for the newspaper. I just thought that was cool. And um, but you know as as things have changed now social media is totally different you got podcasts you know that's the reason why we're doing a podcast a podcast right. is the way of the future you know because now you go from podcast just being audio to now you got visualization now so it's basically you know people can actually see what's going on behind the scenes they can see you know the content of your show which is really cool and uh and it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun and i, I tell kids about this all the time they ask me how i got into this and you know, um, you got to be like you said, you've got to be willing to do things you don't want to do. You know, when when there's a job opportunity open up, you can't you can't say no. You know, I mean, people think I just fell into this job. You know, I was doing the right. bull, I was doing the Bulls pre and post game. Uh, I was probably making about four hundred dollars uh, a show. And that was that was just the pregame. And we didn't do a post game, and we didn't do a halftime show, and then we didn't even have sponsors. Yeah, you were in a first, trailer in Oakbrook. I was, I was in a trailer in, Oak, in uh, Oakbrook, you know, and we were. No, I called it a moor because it was so cold, and and I was willing to do that because you got to crawl before you walk, and and that opportunity opened up many, many more opportunities. And then then I got a call from DePaul to to work with Eric Collins and and Kaplan and do you know DePaul games, and that led to ESPN. So every opportunity you know that you get, even as small as it may be it's going to give you an opportunity because you got to crawl before you walk everybody wants to hit a home run everybody wants to get up to to the plate and smash one over the fence but hey you know what you you get you win the game by getting on base you get on a walk a single i'll take that but a lot of people don't want to do that you're right and and it's it's a good lesson for people to like they see the finished product right they see they see you and they see mark and they see well look at the what these guys have accomplished in their career don't forget and, about whispers He's very accomplished. Very accomplished. <laughs> He's very red, too. <laughs> very burnt. Super red. Uh, oh, they thanks, see Lord. all of that, and they, they, like, they don't understand like, everything that went into it. And so that's the goal. Like, you wanna, I, 
I'm always happy when we see like rock stars and I've, I've gotten really good at like picking those out. Like when I met Malika Andrews, I was like, she won't be here long. You know, like after having a conversation with her, you're like, she won't be here long. And she wasn't. No, like, she, wasn't. she was gone. Absolutely gone. Uh, same, same thing for Russ Dorsey, where you're like, oh, th- that kid's brilliant. He won't be here long. And he and he wasn't. And I, I love hearing those stories, but those stories are few and far between. The, the, most of the stories in our business are the people that that have some grind to them and and didn't say no to like the opportunities that were in front of them. I, I love like honestly in everything that I've done and I, I've loved everything. That's why I like keep trying to do a lot of different stuff. I like to challenge myself in that way. But the teaching is the most gratifying. It's it's where I'm most comfortable. I think I am the best version of myself when I am in a classroom with my students. And like I get high off of their success when I hear that one of my students is up for a job or needs a letter of recommendation or is doing something that's completely foreign to what it is that we taught, but there are elements of it that they can take with them into that other thing. Like, I love that, man. Like I, I, it's such a great feeling. And, and I, my parents are both teachers. My, my dad was a professor at Chicago state and at Northern and my mom taught primary and I didn't, I mean, I got it. Like I understood like what a great job it was, but usually I was seeing like how hard it was when they come home. I'd see like my mom and her lesson plans and like how meticulous they were and all the things that she wanted to accomplish. But then as I got older, when my parents would get recognized on the street by their students and those students would thank them, you go, okay, this is, this is a really fulfilling thing. I think that probably when I'm done with the industry or the industry is done with me, that's probably where I am. I'm probably in a classroom somewhere. So you're proud of Nikki Knuckles is what you're saying. Hell yeah. And and you know why? <laughs> I'm proud because he, he's been on the grind working on his comedy. And he like figures some stuff out while he was in the class with me. And I love that. Like, you don't have to re- you don't have to just be one thing. He can keep his desire for sports and he can add it to his desire for music and for comedy. And then he, he can figure out how to make all of that stuff work. That's the goal. I'm big into I mean, I don't I don't mean to sound Pollyanna because I try to be honest with students, but I don't believe in dream killing. I'm I'm here like if you want to do something, let's figure out the best ways that you can go about doing it. Let's let's try to give you the tools that you need to to let you walk into any room and feel comfortable. Those are the those are the things that I want them to to learn. There's a lot of technical stuff that I I work through with them, but the most important part is I want them to understand what the industry is as it continues to evolve and how they can find a space in that industry. Whispers, you got one of your crazy questions? I know you've done cool. some research. Oh, I sure. love crazy questions. All right. All right, Laura. So what did you mean back in the day with that cryptic message that uh, Madonna's performance is the key to the Mario level you can't get to? Wait, when did I say that? <laughs> in how long ago was that tweet? 2015. Oh Lord, I don't even know. Uh because I can't figure it out. I don't know. Was that like a Super Bowl performance? It could have been. I'm guessing that must have been it, but you must well, be. All Mario. right, so say say it to me again. What did I say? Madonna's Let me see perf- if I can I can figure out what what a forty year old me was thinking. Madonna's performance is the key to a Mario level you can't get to. Oh, you know what? I think I saw her perform. And I was like, man, she still has it, but she's still strange. <laughs> and like, it's like the secret Mario levels that, that you, like, have you ever played the game, like, to the end end, where you go through not just the regular Super Mario, but then the sped up version that's a little bit harder, and you keep going? That's what it's like. Like, Madonna is, 
is she's on some other stuff, man. So you have to you you have to to understand that that is one of the greatest creatives that's ever walked the face of the earth. But that doesn't mean that we get everything that she puts out there. Well, see, you got to the bottom of that whispers. Yeah. We're really proud of you. I mean, a lot of people I think were wondering. <laughs> hey, before we let you go, tell the folks about uh, your your comic book writing and how they can uh, b- sample some of that. Okay, so there's a. Uh, by the way, the guy that I worked on the on the comic book with, Kyle Higgins, he's a huge fan of you guys. He's from the area. He's from Lockport. So Kyle's like a big deal, man. Like he's written Nightwing and Batman. Yeah. Oh wow. He, he yeah, like he directed um um Power Rangers. Like he's a real dude. So he has this book called Radiant Black. And he said to me that he he he's like just kind of mentioned it casually about a year ago. He said, hey, I want you to write a character. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, man. Like, all right. Like, obviously, I'm a geek. I love comic book stuff. I love, you know, MCU stuff. I've been reading since I was 10, 11 years old. And he's like, no, I really want you to. I was like, okay. All right, let's see what it is. And so he told me what it was. And I got to work with him and write the origin story for one of the main characters of the book. And it's in Radiant Black number 18. Okay. Um, it's out right now. Actually, it's it's in comic book stores literally right now for the next week or so. And then uh, Radiant 19 will be out and ready to go. But it was a real challenge, and I'm really proud of it. Um, I like telling stories. I, th- I think that's part of the reason that all of us get into this business, that we're storytellers of some sort. And I wanted to know if I could play on that level. And it took it took us we I think we did a really dope concept. The art is amazing. I had nothing to do with the art. I only had to do with the words. But when it came out, when we finished it, I was satisfied. Like that was enough for me that this book was going to come out. People that I loved were going to be able to see it. Fans of, of, of me were able to buy it and see it. And I was satisfied. But yeah. then we started getting reviews and the reviews went really well. Uh, we got a shout out from Patton Oswalt, the comedian. Yeah, yeah. Who who loved like he loved it, and he came on the radio show, and he he said that he was shocked that I was that was my first venture into writing a comic book. So it's felt really good. It's got me hungry and thirsty for more. I've got stories that I think are good that I want to tell, but to be able to walk into my favorite comic book store, which is first aid in, in Hyde park and see my name on the top of a book that's being recommended by them. And they don't even know that I wrote it. Um, it's dope. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that I took the leap. Um, golf talks about that a lot where you have these ideas and you want to, be brave to take that leap into something that you haven't done. And I can't tell my students to go out here and try stuff that that they're uncomfortable with and then not put myself in a similar position. But yeah, it's out in stores right now. Radiant black 18. It's like, I'm not saying this because I wrote it. I think the concept that Kyle came up with and the art that uh, Stefano Simeone, who's the artist did with it is brilliant. I really recommend people pick it up and check it out because it's a storytelling device that has been rarely done in, in comic books. We're telling a story from four different time periods on every page. It's, it's following four different time periods on every single page of the book. So it took a lot to get it done. And I'm so, so happy and grateful we were able to do it. One more question before you go. You you know Wakanda Forever is coming out on November 11th. Yeah, are you excited to see that? And how do you think how do you think it's going to come out? I'm excited. I know that. Look, when Chadwick Boseman died, like it hit all of us like really hard yes. because um, the Black Panther movie I feel like is a is a seminal moment in black culture and black superhero culture. Like it meant something. Yes. It meant something. What was cool to me is it meant something to people who aren't in the black community that they went and saw it and they have, they were like, you know what? It doesn't matter that the entire cast was black. 
it was a great story and it was a great vehicle for storytelling. And then you have someone who, and I get that, you know, he, he's King T'Challa, but Chadwick Boseman, the way that he carried himself was regal. Yes. And so when he died, it, it, it hurt. Like it really, really hurt. And trying to figure out what they could do with that entire like wing of the Marvel MCU. That's a significant part of it. Yeah. How do you go about building this movie? I, I read the books like so I, I understood that there were a couple different options and where they could go where Shuri could end up being Black Panther because she's Black Panther in the book. Yeah. So it, it's not that weird to me. I'm excited. I'm excited what they're what they're what they're doing in this one. I cannot wait to see it. I want to see like the beautiful thing about the Black Panther movie was the colors. Like it yeah. was so beautiful and it really represented um Africa in a way that we haven't seen a lot of on film. And and I I dug that. So I can't wait to see what they do here. I think it's going to be dope. And um and there's a character that you've probably seen and you're like, "Wait, why is why is there, it look like Iron Man is in this movie?" Well, there's a character called Iron Heart, and Chicagoan should be up on this because Eve Ewing, who is from Chicago, she's an incredible author and educator. She wrote the Iron Heart book for a long time. So, the, and the character who plays Iron Heart is Riri Williams. Is a, is her name is Riri Williams, and she's a 15 year old genius from the South Side of Chicago. Oh wow! So. When you when you go see this movie and you see a, a an Iron Man type figure, know that that's that's Riri Williams and and it's Chicago representing yet again. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Lawrence, we want to thank you for taking so much of your evening to spend some time with us here on the podcast. Uh, you can catch Lawrence ten to two, the Bernstein and Holmes show, and, and you want to check out the House of L podcast. It is one of the best in the business. You will enjoy every episode and. Always enjoy talking with you, my friend. Uh, we just scratched the surface. We'll have to have you on again. Guys, I feel so bad because I know I'm so long-winded, so I apologize no, for that. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, we, you're the best. And and we and people watching on YouTube, we love your shirt, J.D., remembering our buddy Jeff Dickerson. Uh, yes. and we, we lost oh, Les Grobstein as well, and it's, it's been a tough year for a lot of people in the media, and it's great that you keep uh, Jeff's memory alive with the shirt. Yeah, I have a, I have a picture in in – I have the prayer card from his service right next to the prayer card of, of our dear friend, Doug Buffon. Yeah. And JD was my travel partner. When we right. were covering the, the team, we, we traveled together a lot. And um, what his son's going through is really hard. So I'm oh, glad sure. that the obvious shirts people made these. And obviously the Vaughn McClure and Jeff Dickerson foundation is doing incredible work for two men that I, I I really really admired. So anytime that I can talk about JD, I'm I am up for it. So thank you so much for for recognizing the shirt and uh, how great a man Jeff Dickerson was. Awesome, absolutely, Lawrence. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. I pre whispers me and you, man. Me and you. <laughs> going going a a whole candy. tweet segment, man. Hey. A whole tweet segment. And get 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 my boy Goss some lotion. Get the big candy bars. Hey, coming up next, we're going to talk about scary movies <laughs> on Give Me the Hot Sauce. Thanks, Lawrence. Yeah. Why don't you tell the folks about Angel Water? Yeah, go ahead. Well, Mark, well, what they're trying to do <laughs> is, uh, is uh, clean up the water around here. People keep drinking this nasty Chicago water. Chromium six and toxins in it and blah blah blah. And you can beep, call beep, beep, them beep, and beep, get a free beep. test. That's right. Even Stacy's water where he lives. How is your water? He doesn't Stacey? live in the suburbs anymore. I know it's worse in the city. Those lead pipes. Well, someone wake me up when he's done. The... Oh jeez. So what you need to do is call who? Stacy? Cheap little legs. Cheap little legs. Oh, I just saw him in Florida. He was not happy about the last pipe. He's on a shrimp boat right now in, in Naples. <laughs> there we go. That's what he was looking for. So, if you want a free water test to see if you got some junk in your water, and I guarantee you do, or junk you in your trunk. <laughs> Good to have that too. They can't help you with that. But call Angel Water at 847 382 7800 and get your water tested for free today. 
they'll come out to your house and do it. So, Tim, I got a question for you. I know that, that you're good friends with our with our sponsors at Angel Water. When he writes the check out to you, does he put F U in the note uh, section? Uh, no, he writes F U Stacy. Oh, <laughs> no. oh, come on Man, now. You, wait, get on me. Hey, don't, don't bring Stacy oh, into this. Yeah, you threw me under the bus. <laughs> He's like, yeah, tell Daddy Long Legs. <laughs> okay, first of all, first of all, listen. Listen, Chief Little Legs, Andy Wilson, <laughs> I love you like a brother I never had. Because you couldn't really be part of my family because we're all over six foot six. But that, that's not stopping me from the love that I have for Andy Wilson because you know what? We've known him for a long time. He's got a nice jump shot. You know, he can play, but he can hoop. He can really hoop. Uh, his jersey was denied, though. He didn't get to hang up in the rafters. We denied that, too. He's crusty as mine. Yeah. But, but <laughs> listen, seriously, though, no, seriously, Andy stopped by my room one time. You know, I was in a hotel in, uh, in Miami. He stopped by to say hello, and uh, he knocked on the door. So I looked through the peephole oh, no. and I couldn't see anybody. <laughs> oh no! So, so I went back. I went back in the room and sat down. All of a sudden, knocked again. Pew, pew, pew. I'm like, who in the hell is at my door? Yeah. So I looked through the peephole again. Can't see anybody. And he said, "Down here, <laughs> down here." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, for wow. folks that think this is a running Whoa. joke, there actually is an Angel Water Company. There is. And they do fantastic yes. work. So yes. if you need look at some... Mark. Look, look at Mike. Hey, look at Mark after he spit his water out about a month ago. And now he's trying to be on his, <laughs> now he's trying to be on his team. Yeah, it's oh. a classic oh. moment. Oh. Best of giving the hot sauce. Who named the chief little legs? Yeah, that's oh, the top five of oh, the best of the Not top 17, Mark. Remember, remember he spit the water out? He spit the water out on the table? Yeah. Yeah, okay, Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah we know what you. We know about you, Mark. Hey, so how can the folks get a discount, uh, Angel water. Oh, they use uh, King 21 code. <laughs> Get a free water test. There you go. Is it really? Yeah. Yes, it's oh, true. Shit. I'm over here laughing. I thought it was a joke. No, no, no. no, this, no. Is, this is legitimate. Oh, okay. America, this is legit. <laughs> okay. Make sure. All jokes aside, because you know I like to joke. All He's, jokes aside, it's great water. Andy does a great job. Angel Water Soft is awesome. I've been using them for years. He used to bring salt to my house because I had hard water in Long Grove. The water was like freaking acid. And so he put the little, he bring those, true. he bring those 25 pound uh, big salt blocks. Yeah. And he got my water running great. There you go. Because I used to dread taking a shower at the crib. I couldn't wait to go on the road. Like I couldn't wait to get to the hotel to take a nice soft water. You know, like taking the water in my house back in the day, it was like, you know, somebody hitting you with uh, little pellets. <laughs> You know, that's how it felt. It's racks. You know, it, it is Halloween night, so we were thinking about uh, some of the best scary movies we've seen. You're talking about a showering scene. How about Psycho? <laughs> dee, 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 dee. That wasn't too scary, Mark. <laughs> Back in the day, that was Mark, scary. Mark, that, that was chocolate scary. syrup that went down the drain. Do you know yeah, that? it wasn't. It wasn't no, it, wasn't it was a black and white film. Birds was more scary than that. That was scary. Yeah. Birds was more scary than that because you, you, I've seen people being attacked by birds, and that's some real stuff. Like seriously, you ever thrown bread out yeah. on a beach? Been attacked? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. the same thing. Or, or you ever? I, I remember taking my son to a duck pond when he was little. Yeah, like, he liked to go feed the ducks, right? So I take Eric out there. Eric's like probably about two and a half, three years old. He's like, you know, feed the ducks. All of a sudden, man, they just they engulfed him. <laughs> it's like all these ducks, all these ducks came off the water and started attacking yeah. him. So I'm That's, picking yeah. him up. I'm picking him up, throwing him on the shot. I'm running, and they're biting me in the leg. And I'm like, oh my God, like all over a piece of bread. Like, wow. So they should have made a movie about that, Killer Ducks. Yeah, I mean, the evolution of scary movies, you know, now we've got the, you know, the special effects you can drop in and really horrify people. But back when it was in the black and white days, <sighs> you know, they still find a way to scare people. And then hey. you get in, you get in the 70s. I remember seeing The Exorcist. That scared oh, the yeah. hell out of me. And the, when was that, the 70s? Yeah. yeah Mid Mark, 70s. how old are you? 104. Jesus. Jesus. What, are you, what are you, a freaking <laughs> vampire? What, 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 what do you think? You're sitting next to Neil <laughs> Funk? What are you I doing here? I don't know, here? man. Like, the 70s, I was a baby. Uh, I tell you a movie that my brothers made me watch. It was called Gargoyles. And I remember my brothers oh, made geez. me watch it. You remember Gargoyles? Yeah. Okay, so they, they would sneak in at night and kidnap mm -hmm. people, and then they try to breed with women yeah. and have, ba you know, have baby gargoyles. And I, I, could, I was so scared to go to bed every night because I thought a gargoyle was going to come out from underneath my bed. That was one of the most scary movies I've ever seen. And even to this day, I've seen it, and I go, wow, this is still scary. <laughs> <laughs> this is still scary. My second, my, my, one of my favorite movies that I'm really, I was really scared of is Salem's Lot. With uh, with uh, Hutch from Starsky and Hutch, yeah, yeah, Soul. yeah, yeah, that was good. That was a scary movie. That the vampire in that movie is like that. I don't know if we have a picture of it, but that's the that's the Salem's Lot right there. That's one of my scariest movies. But you got to see the vampire. The vampire is really really scary. He's bald headed, kind of like Chuck Swirsky's head. He's got like a bald head, <laughs> and he's got pointed ears, and he's about six foot four. Did he he's talk a, like Chuck? Oh, see, that's uncalled for. Yeah, so, you yeah. know what? Oh, sorry. Uh, Chuck was a guest. He's a friend of the program. Oh, Stop he's that. great. But okay. So, 
Okay, so Salem, Salem's Lot was 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 really scary. And I put my second one up there, boys. Now, America, if you haven't seen the town that dreaded sundown, that's a scary movie. That is like that happened in Texas. <laughs> that's a real movie. That's like that. Yeah. That's not like a fake movie, America. This is like a real movie that happened, kind of like Dahmer. Okay, so this happened like in the 1950s, 60s. Okay, they never caught the guy. Okay, so what happened was like you know how kids go to Lovers Lane back in the day. Mark, you probably you were during that time back in the fifties and sixties. You go in <laughs> going to the car, drive in the theater. Drive-in theater yeah. You with your girl. Yeah. You kicking it in Wisconsin. You know. You, you, go. you got a little sarsaparilla. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're drinking that. <laughs> And then dude comes in with a potato sack. He comes in with a potato sack and like farmer's overalls. And he just, and he, he was just. You're like D? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. He did have a shirt. He did have a shirt like that, America. Look at that. Look at that. Looking like the, the bounty paper towel guy. He did have a shirt like that. Look at, look at, his, look at his face. Look at his face. Look at him. That's all right, D. I got number love for you, boy. I got, can I get a roll of paper towels? I mean, anyway, so, 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 so the town so of Dreaded Sundown, the kids would be in the car. And they would be making out in the car, you know, do do do. And all of a sudden, this dude would be standing in front of the car, and yeah. they'd be like, "It's some." The girl would be like, "I think someone's out there." And the guy was, you know, because he's trying to get. Is that you. your dad? He's, no, no, he's trying to he's trying to go to all around the bases. So he's like, "There's no one out there. Just relax, relax, relax." She goes, "No, there's someone out there." And he's like, "There's no one out there." So he hits the lights, and then here's this dude with like a knife with a with a potato sack head, and he's just sitting there <laughs> looking at you. And th- that picture right there. I'm scared right now looking at that picture. Seriously. Wow. Go If you have not seen this movie, check it out. I guarantee you, you will be scared. This is a true story, America. This is not like some made-up horror film. This is a true story. It happened somewhere like in Texas, a town of dreaded sundown. It's very scary. Whispers, what do you got on your recommendations for scary movies? Jeez, uh, some, something's haunted me for years. Like <laughs> like that uh, show Deep Throat. You ever you guys ever see that? Oh, my goodness. That was terrifying. Oh, my. Snoop? Snoop, you know what Deep Throat is? Snoop? Yeah, Snoop. <laughs> no, nothing Snoop. again. Nothing? Bail us out. Oh, well, oh uh, man. Well, when you see that, when you're like... Who's hey, in Deep Throat? Uh, Linda Lovelace. Yeah. Linda Lovelace. Yeah, I mean, when you compare her to, like, Linda Blair, there was no contest. But she, when, when Linda Lovelace... <laughs> could she it, turn was her head scarier. around in a circle? Pretty much. She can do a lot of things with her head. It was terrifying. And when you're six. Oh, wow. When you're six years old watching that, you're, you you're terrified. Six? Yeah. Your dad, your dad had why to watch that. Why were on. you watching that at six my, years my, old? My, my dad left it on repeat in the uh, machine. So. <laughs> That's, that says a lot about the way you turned out. Well, I'm a bit it says a lot about the Kelly family, okay? <laughs> well, that's why I was disappointed. We were talking to Lawrence Holmes earlier, and Stacy didn't bring up the comic book we're working on. What's that? It's called Whispers. It's about a, uh, a guy Demented. who's a porn, porn star during the day and a vigilante at night. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, it's a long story. What's the vig- what are you a vigilante of? Like, what, are we, what, is, what are you after? Who are you trying to get? You get bad people. <laughs> what are you looking at me for? <laughs> you like <laughs> bad people. We're partners. How are you going to be? Well, that's what I'm me? saying. You know how the story goes. Why don't uh, you tell the crowd? Uh, I don't, I don't tell know America that. what's going on. America, this guy's got some mental problems. Okay, I'm just going to throw <laughs> well, that out there. I did there. watch Let me tell six. you something. This guy's talking about a story with a porn with a porn star by day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're talking about Halloween themed. Yes. Fear. You don't think that's scary? Yeah, but it's. A different genre. Yeah. It just right. shows you a freaky side of you, yeah. Tim. We I do have my you. second movie, though. What's that? The Human Centipede. Oh, okay. Ooh. Now we're getting somewhere. Which is similar, too. Miles are where they shouldn't be in this, either. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that movie's about? Look yeah, at they it. They turn kids it. into centipedes. Yeah, but you know how they no. do that? No. Mark, no. it's not worse than that. They sew their mouth to the other guy's butt in front of them. <laughs> and that so, ain't right. So, listen. it's a, America. America, listen to this. Don't watch this movie. Okay, I'm just going to... I'm just doing this out there. There's a lot of things I'll tell you, but do not watch this movie. Because they make this, it seem real. It's, it's, it, it's very... It's it's very scarring. I'm still scarred yeah. by watching it. Someone told me, it's, hey, man, watch Human Sydney. It's a really great movie, scary movie, da da It's not scary. What, it's, what it is is... It's disturbing. disturbing. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So you got this crazy doctor in America. So I'm going to tell you. Crazy doctor, he gets these kids. Of course, you got teenagers that show up. You know, at this place, I, I think they had some kind of like some kind of giveaway or something. <laughs> These kids show up. <laughs> Free and then, food. 
<laughs> yeah, free food, free hot drinks. Hot sauce. Free drinks. <laughs> oh, if it was hot, hot sauce. sauce. <laughs> oh, it might have been whispers. Whispers <laughs> might be, he might be making a human centipede all lot. What's he doing when he's packaging that hot sauce? Oh, That's he's packaging what centipedes, <laughs> baby. The centipedes are packing. How about Jeff Goldblum turning into a fly? That was pretty weird. Oh, time. Brindle fly? Yeah, yeah, that was, oh, man. When his ear fell off? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was, yeah, that was kind of, that was kind of gross. Those three hairs in his back? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, that was kind of bad. We get sound effects, too. Yeah, that was kind of bad, Mark. Yeah. Brand new uh, fly. fly shits and pukes every time it lands. Oh, go, you got another one, Mark? Come on, yeah, let's I go. Yeah, ca- I called Neil Funk in, in the break, and, and I asked him, what's your favorite scary movie? He loved The Shining. Here's Ooh. Johnny. You can never replicate that movie again. You cannot make no. a remake of that. Scatman yeah, Scrubbers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody here? Anybody yeah. home? Yeah, the, the little creepy twins. It's tough the, to go the, to bed after watching oh, that Oh, speaking Ooh. of that, I was in a long hallway the other night uh, when I was in, where was we at the last road trip? Oh, San Antonio. We're in San Antonio. They had me in a shining a shining room. <laughs> My, I was in room, okay, trip this. I was in room 601. So I'm yeah. thinking, I get off the elevator. I, I look at my, my room list. I'm like, 601. I go, oh, great. It's got to be somewhere by the elevator. Man, I swear <laughs> to God. I said, man, I need an Uber. Because it was it was at the very back, and it was a long. I wish I would have taken a picture of it. But it was well worth it, though, because they had me in a suite. They had me in like a really, like an apartment. It was really nice. It was like 1,500 square feet. It was really nice. So it was worth the walk. <laughs> it was worth the walk, Mark. But it was, it was like a shining. Was there an old lady in the tub? Shut up, man. <laughs> damn. <laughs> no, no, damn old lady in the tub. All right, I'm going to say this. I'm going to also say this. Another scary movie, The Heels Have Eyes. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah. America, I don't know if you've seen The Heels Have Eyes. Um, there's a couple of people I've met in real life that look like those people The Heels Have Eyes. <laughs> <laughs> told them the corn, too. Yeah, I was thinking. Oh, no, another movie. I th- you know, I'm a horror film. I'm a horror film guy. So Jeepers Creepers. The original one. The original one. The other ones were like kind of silly. But the first one was freaking scary. Like the dude just, he just pop up. He was, he was a scarecrow. And then all of a sudden he turned into this like demon and he's taking people's eyes. He's taking their noses or their, their mouth. I mean, it was, oh. How about the grudge? You ever see that one? The no, kid that was, living that, in the that, attic. That wasn't too scary. That wasn't Isn't that scary. Home Alone? <laughs> oh, you know what? Same concept. And, and, you know what? It's, it's just a change. It's just uh-huh. change. really hard to catch. <laughs> just, just uh, who's, ah! that? <laughs> who's that? Matt, oh, we got Maddie. Maddie, what is this? Twitches, Disney. Oh, Maddie, hell no. That wasn't scary. Twitches. Mean, mean Girls was scary to her. Yeah, Mean Girls was scary to her. Yeah, exactly. This reminded me of some girls at my school. Oh, I saw that one, Nikki Knuckles. Get oh, out. Oh, Nikki yeah. was the get out. Yeah, I live that every day. <laughs> I'm trying to get out every day. So oh, the penguin. The was... penguin. Oh, Francisco. Oh, it, that's good, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Francisco. That's a good one, Francisco. I'm, I'm sure with that with that hoodie sweatshirt, you might get Penny, caught, too. Penny they might wise. take you down there. Pennywise in the uh And the this drain. is D's. What the hell is this? I can't even see it. Insidious. Insidious. Oh, that's good, too. Yeah, you guys are disturbing. Has anyone yeah. seen that new one, The Black Phone, or whatever that's it's called? It's always good to oh, know. Oh, The Black Phone with uh, Ethan Hawke? Yeah, is that good? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, have y'all seen The Black Phone? The Black Phone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something, man. That was that was kind of creepy, too. I just want to say, you know, we're going to change pace a little bit, uh, America. There was a robbery committed today. <laughs> I just want to throw this out here, okay? Now, and very seldom do I talk about <laughs> crime. <laughs> on the show okay? doesn't but, pay but i was i didn't make sure i paid okay so i was a victim of, of a robbery today okay I wouldn't use a door no one used a gun or a knife on me no one held me up i ordered from doordash oh here we okay? go order from doordash another sponsor gone Mark. 70 go. 70 70 70 dollars <laughs> worth of food you know and um waiting for delivery mark i'm hungry you know starving we're getting ready to go you know use king to the, Shut up, man. I'm telling the story. I've been victimized. PTSD. Oh. Be quiet. I'll never say that again. So thank you. So <laughs> so I'm out here. I get the I get the text. Your food's outside, you know, no. door to something. So I'm running down here. Doo, 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 and all is there is the drinks. Okay? The bag is gone. There's no food there. And I'm like, wait a minute, what the hell? And DoorDash takes a picture of the food when they leave it at your door. So they took a picture, clearly a bag of food. It was from the yolk. That's what it's called. It's the breakfast stuff. So clearly it was there. But it wasn't there when I went to go get it. Okay. So I, I set another trap. I wanted to see if I could catch the culprit stealing more food. We almost got him. My, my, my friend, my friend, we were, 
who doesn't want to be mentioned on the air right now. <laughs> so we, we almost caught him. Little, little, yeah, she doesn't want to be known on the air, guys. Don't show her. <laughs> so a, a squirrel yeah. named yeah. Roberta? Yeah, a squirrel named Roberta. <laughs> she goes and gets the food and sees, sees the guy who she thinks is the culprit. He's in a little white Honda, a little silver Honda, and he's chilling on the side. And, is, you know, he, he had already came by creeping, you know. And then she said, well, yeah, he was kind of skinny. So he probably was looking to get the second order of food, too. So, yeah. So if you're out there eating Stacey King's food, I hope you choke. I do. I, you know, I hope you choke. I do. You don't steal what? people's food. That is, I've never had that happen the whole time I lived over my area. Because we live in, you know, when I'm living in a nice neighborhood, people walking their dogs, you know, squirrels come up, you give them a, a peanut, and they go on about their business. You know, the deer come over there to eat off the grass. No one, no one bothers anybody. No one bothers anybody. Seven dwarves. Stole the first that. time I had a DoorDash order stolen. But I give DoorDash, DoorDash, hey, listen, shout out to you because you gave me my $71 back. So, oh, sponsors are back. Yeah, back. sponsors are back. <laughs> thank you, DoorDash. I appreciate, that. I appreciate that. King 21, thank you very much. <laughs> King 21. <laughs> thank you very much, DoorDash. We love you. I'm going to keep ordering from you, but I'm not leaving driver's tips anymore. Speaking of drivers, I think uh, oh. your, your buddy Mike is scared out Mike, there because listen. we're talking about these scary movies. He's out in the dark all by himself. Out First there. of all, Mike is a third degree black yeah, man. He's true. not afraid yeah. of anything. Okay, yeah. um, Mike, shout out to you. You know, I'm I'm trying to get Mike on the show, but Mike has always got something to do. He went yeah. out with the Double Mint Twins last That's right, week, yeah. and you know now you know he's like, man, I'm a little tired from the Double Mint Twins, <laughs> and I, I can't come on the show. So shout out all to right. my boy we'll Mike. Get him on. Okay, so in studio guest. Yeah, yeah. We, I'm trying to get him in here. Maybe we get him. Maybe we get him on. Maybe we can get him on like Zoom from the car. You know, I don't know. I don't know what kind of. Well, I take that back. I don't know how the reception is in the in the in the you know the big the big uh, car. I don't know. So I don't know. But Mike, thanks for what you do, Mike. I appreciate you. He's, he asked me, did I want, he was going to Mariano's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Every day he goes to Mariano's. Every time he drops me off, he says, I'm going to Mariano's. You want me to get you a chicken? <laughs> 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 so every day Mike says that. Every time he drops me off at the studio, he goes, hey, I'm going to Mariano's. You want me to grab you a roasted chicken? So today I said, Mike, why do you think I want roasted chicken yeah. all the time, man? Is it because I'm black? Wait, was <laughs> you he profiling you? Yeah, you were racial profiling. Yeah. Black people oh, like chicken. Man. That's what I'm called for. Okay? But I didn't want the roasted chicken, but I appreciate Mike always asks because he always takes care of me. He gets me like my uh, Frappuccino from uh, Starbucks. He, he has he, an app. He, he can always ask us. Who? Mark and I, We sometimes we're hungry. No one cares about you. That's why. <laughs> that's why. That's why he didn't. That's why he didn't let you buy the lemons when you wanted to go downtown. Nobody said, wants to see somebody uh, eating no, a roasted chicken yeah, in the back of a limo. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So if I'm gonna you cry. Again, I'm gonna you, cry in one of these if, episodes. If you, if you interrupt me again, I'm throat punching you. I'm just gonna throw that out <laughs> no, there. Okay? I'll cry before that. You know, just you always interrupt me. Okay. Windy City Limousine provides championship service. Making a reservation is so easy; it's a slam dunk. Let Windy City break the reservation. Oh, I'm sorry. Let, let Windy City break the full court pressure of traffic and get you to your destination in style and on time. Contact Windy at 847-916-9300. That's WindyCityLimos.com. And tell them Timmy Whisper sent you. We we'll probably won't get a discount. <laughs> you'll probably, matter of fact, you'll probably hang the phone up on you, but it's at least the effort that counts. Use code Whispers and pay 20% more. That's Use right. Use code That'll Snoop work. Doggy Doghead. I guarantee you might get something. <laughs> We've uh, had some people weigh in with some scary movies on the uh, chat on YouTube. So uh, people talk about like Silence of the Lambs. Ooh, that Clarice. was good. Yeah. Clarice. Find scary. Chianti. I ate his liver with a fava beans. <laughs> Somebody mentioned Identity. I don't know. Do you see that? How about the, the uh, Saw series? Yeah, so, so it, 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 after about the 15th saw, it kind of <laughs> got kind of got redundant. And you know, the same guy, you know, is all the time. I mean, the first two or three were pretty good. I give it to. What do you think about the, the new movie coming out with uh, Halloween coming to an end? They finally. You know what, it's the man? Same listen, movie. let me tell you yeah. something. They re let me tell you something. That, that was the worst Halloween <laughs> movie. <laughs> it was the worst they Halloween just movie ever. It yeah. was the dumbest movie ever. Huh? It was Terrible. 13. Okay, they should have stopped at like six. Okay. First no, of two. all, Michael Michael Myers is about hundred years yeah, old. Yeah, right, okay? right, right. Did you see it, Mark? No, I didn't. Okay, uh, Merrick, if you if you didn't if you didn't watch it, I'm spoiler alert. Okay, <laughs> Michael Myers is in a cave somewhere, right? He's in a cave somewhere in a sewer. Okay, and Jamie Lee Curtis, and he's about hundred years him? old. Jamie Lee Curtis is a grandmother; she can barely move. Okay, <laughs> so so this kid is going to take the characteristics of Michael Myers yeah. per se. Okay? okay, he killed a little kid, knocked him over a railing, whatever. So he goes into a cave. He sees Michael Myers, right, America? So a police officer followed him down there. So he realizes Michael Myers down there. Michael Myers, he barely moves. He's like, uh, uh He's like, you know, all stiff. <laughs> now, when do you ever know Michael Myers to get his butt whooped? Ever. Never. 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 So 
Michael Myers is like coming at the police officer, and the police officer punched him, boom, and it hit him in the chest. He holds his chest. He kicked him in the knee, he held his knee. I'm like, you got to be freaking kidding me. <laughs> Michael Myers is getting his ass whooped right now. There's no way. Well, he is 106. <laughs> he, he was, there's no way. So then, then the kid held him. The kid held him. Michael Myers got his strength from killing people. So the kid held him, you know, held the police officer, and then Michael Myers... He comes up with a knife and then they're playing the Halloween music. And, it's and then all of a sudden he just starts getting strong again. And yeah. I get to worst movie ever. <laughs> Don't see it. Zero stars. Horrible. horrible. I'm glad I saw it on like uh on prime video. Because if I'd have went to the if I'd have went to the theater, I would have been upset. I would ask yeah. for my money back. There's a review from Stacey King. Yes. You only get that here on Give Me the Hot Sauce. Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever. <laughs> hey, we want to thank our special guest, Lawrence Holmes. If you heard our Ooh, reviews yeah. on all these scary movies, you might yeah. might have an idea for another comic book. So that's uh, look for so that. I said Squid Game. Wait for Whispers yeah. to come Have you come seen up. Squid Game? I watched a little bit of it. I, yeah, I didn't. Uh, that was good. I, I I, you it, saw gets, it? it gets better as it goes on, and you get. Oh, I should have stayed with it. Yeah. Is what yeah, you're saying? Really the really plot really thickens. <laughs> yeah, <you can't> <laughs> those, are, those are hours I can't get back, Mark. It's, <laughs> it's like bit of honey on your teeth. You just can't get rid of it. Right. <laughs> yeah, somebody saw my Halloween candy. They were talking about Good and Plenty, and I'm like, Oh, oh that's some of the worst oh, candy. Oh, oh, okay. the America, America. America. Let me tell you something. <laughs> if I was a child and I walked up to your house and said "trick or treat," and you gave me licorice or, or Good and Plenty's, I'm throat punching in your ass as a six-year-old. Give me an I'm, I'm going to say, excuse me, excuse me, let me I'm going to move a chair up, I'm going to grab one of your little furniture outside, and I'm going to jump on the last right up there, and I'm going to yeah. go, ooh, right in your throat <laughs> for giving me a good plenty. Stop giving out this nasty, yeah. gross candy. And whoever, whoever's eating good and plenty, somebody's eating that on the, on the, on the, on the, on the podcast over here, said one of the guests. One of the people? That's so, no, 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 no. Nobody oh, mentioned that. Oh, I was oh, getting ready to say, you need to get out of your parents' basement. Yeah. There's other things that good and plenty. Hold on, Francisco, was that you? You no, no, no. Okay. So if, if you ring a doorbell and somebody's going to give you raisins or an apple oh, or, a, dude, or a granola no, bar, no. I mean, you just you stop. No, no. Yeah. You just, you're, first or of all, throw change nobody, in your bed. nobody's going to. <laughs> I'd rather take some money, though. You give me some money, well, I'd go buy my pennies, candy. Though. But if you're throwing pennies, no. But if you're throwing quarters and dollars, I'll take that because I, I can go buy the candy buy I want. Buy your candy, yeah. But if you, I don't want no good and plenty. I don't want no. I don't, somebody offered me the other day some black licorice on the plane. I literally took the rope and just started beating them with it. I'm like, <laughs> nobody eats this anymore. But here we do. We, we actually live in the candy capital of the world right here. Necco candy is here. Tootsie Roll. Yeah. Well, I was showing uh, Stacy a picture earlier. They built this big horrible, horrible factory right in, in, in Milwaukee. In Kenosha. Right Kenosha. Yeah, yeah, right when we cross yes. the state line. Yeah, that thing is huge. But even Frara Pan is here. I, we're, they're all yeah. here. Mars, the m and all this stuff. Listen, yeah. I'm just telling you right now. Crazy. Don't <laughs> Four to five dentists recommend. Listen, I don't go <laughs> to <care. laughs> Chicago. Halloween's once a year. Halloween's once a year. Save your money if you just, just splurge for one time a year. Yeah. Don't pull out the gross candy and give to these little children. They are the future. Yeah. Yeah, give Do them not give them something good. good. Give them something good. Don't King give them no nasty. Snickers. Yeah, give them some. You know what? If you really want to give them some America, you know, give them some Stacey King hot sauce. Okay? Give me the hot sauce. <laughs> you know, you want to, you want to. Just throw a bottle in there. Lob a bottle in there. America, look at this. <laughs> Look how small, it. It'll look fit how the small these bottles yeah. are. Okay, you could just drop it. <laughs> Trick or treat, just drop one in there. You could drop three in there if you buy, yeah. you know, groups of four. Yeah. So, so forget the licorice because no one's eating that shit. Eat this right here. <laughs> eat this, okay? This eat is what this. you eat. This because it's there good. You go. It's good on tacos and it's my personal favorite. Or three drops little, of eighteen seventy one. Little shameless plug. Little else. shameless plug, America. Snoop. What do you Snoop loves it too. No, no. Give me the hot sauce dot com for all no, your no. hot sauce needs. <laughs> Whispers, we're glad you're back from Florida. We missed you the last couple of weeks. I missed no, being here. Yeah, good to have you here. Glad that you got the no, two kegs didn't. reloaded. <laughs> yeah, it's always that was good. That's all for you, Mark. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> no, we didn't. Keep no. the good times going. If you're watching, you can see the message. Happy Halloween from the Happy Hot Sauce crew. Happy Halloween. Maddie and Nicky look, Knuckles, look Francisco, look Spider -Man. Dean. Hey, Spidey. Did Matty Ice is even here in yeah. studio today. So he came in hey, costume listen, as the Spider-Man. Did you get Matt. a shot of that? Yeah, everybody oh, get a shot. Nice. Say, look at Matt. Matt can barely breathe in that suit. Yeah. He had to take that hat off about five times. <laughs> he's like, he's like, man, he was head sweating. He yeah. was dying out there. He lost five pounds. But you know what, though? He did it for the team. He came That's in. That's right. And he, we it, appreciate it's the mood it. of Halloween. We got it's all, all about we got, attitude. We got, we got everybody's dressed up. Everybody's dressed up except for D. You know, D looks like a gangbanger. <laughs> like, you know, you, you, you should give him that. You should, hey, Pinky, you should give him that pink flag and let him, let him rep the, 
let him rep because he got that little that little game banging shirt on. And Francisco just looks like the damn Unabomber. He's gonna drop off something from Amazon in your in your mailbox. And then Maddie, she's in all black, goth, looking like Wednesday Wednesday uh, off of uh, the Adams Family. And she yeah. just needs to put some little white white skin on her face. She would look just like Wednesday. I heard the folks from Drippy got like fifty grand for his T-shirt. Who? For Francisco's high school T-shirt. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> I believe that it. That old raggedy shirt. That ninth grade, too tight, dirty T-shirt. It's better than smelling salts. Yeah, well, you know. And as you know what? Seriously, America. Seriously, America. We love these kids. These kids yeah, we do. We love the kids. We love the kids. Okay, They're great. our future. They're the future. Yeah. And, you know, after the show's over, we're going to do a centipede with them. <laughs> <laughs> After- Maddie, you're going to be in front, Maddie. You're going to be the oh handsome Oh, my goodness. Because <laughs> you're family. You're Tim's niece. So you're family. The rest of you guys are behind. You guys, except for Matt, except for Spider-Man. Spider-Man, we ain't going to use him because his suit's too tight. Watch out um, for yourselves, folks. Stacey save could yourself, be baby. Save yeah. yourself. Yeah. Episode 105 of Give Me the Hot Sauce, the Halloween edition, is in the books. We'll come back with a lot more fun and a new guest next week. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Stacy, you got a message for the folks. Drive home safely, Chicago. Beep, beep. And don't go to Stacy's house to trick or treat because he ain't there. No, I'm not. I left on purpose. That's why we're doing the podcast today. It doesn't have the big bars. <laughs>